A lecturer at Bell's University of Technology, Unifade Temitayo, joins me now from Songota in Ogun State. And also joining me from Addis Ababa in Ethiopia is the director of, of the Institute for Capacity Building in Africa for UNESCO, Yumiko Yokozeki. Good to have you both join us. Now, let me begin with you, Yumiko, and let's start on a global level. What are the International Labour Organization and UNESCO recommendations for teachers? And have they been internationally adopted at this time? Thank you very much. Um, first of all, happy World of Teachers Day, and I'm glad that uh, you had an excellent um, celebration in Abuja. The ILO UNESCO recommendation concerning the status of teachers was adopted on the 5th of October 1966, so that's 54 years ago, at a special intergovernmental conference convened by UNESCO in Paris in cooperation with the ILO. Uh, the document set forth an important issue of teacher status, rights, and responsibilities. It also states standards for their initial preparation and further education, recruitment, employment, teaching and learning conditions. It contains numerous recommendations for teachers' participation in educational decisions through a consultation and negotiation with the educational authorities. Why? Because teachers are important. We are all here because we have a good teachers. As teachers are a fundamental condition for guaranteeing quality education, teachers and educators should be empowered and adequately recruited and remunerated, motivated, professionally qualified and supported in a well-resourced, efficient and effective government system. This is from uh, Education 2030. So every year on the 5th of uh, October, we think of this recommendation because it is not achieved yet. So that's all from me. Over to you. All right. So, Tamita, you've you had these uh, recommendations coming from Yumiko. So, in light of those recommendations, what are the plight of, of um, teachers in Nigeria, especially at this time of the pandemic? Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I want to use this opportunity to congratulate all the all teachers uh, in the world uh, for the opportunity that you have to be part of uh, people that will be molding lives, that will be molding lives, that will teach people how to go in life. So we really appreciate when it comes to living in crisis. Like um, there's no generation that there is no crisis, but how, how to manage the crisis depends on the management and we, uh, we, the teachers, we are one of the people that have the opportunity. Like the issue of the uh, crisis that happened, the pandemic that happened not quite long. So we are able to, as a, like a, an institution based in University of Technology, we are able to carry our students along. The right, so Tamitayo, just, just allow me, Tamitayo. Uh, um, allow me quickly Ma? butt in. Allow me quickly butt in here because Yumiko made said okay. some things about recommendations um, from the ILO and, and UNESCO as so, um, the welfare of teachers, professionalism, training, and all. So help us understand in light of those recommendations, yes. what are the plight of teachers, whether in the private or public sec sector in Nigeria? Okay. Yes. The the, um, the teachers because of the recommendation of the UNESCO. To, um, to honor the teachers, to know that our profession, the profession of teachers, is very important. After the parents, we, the, the, the teachers, they are the next in line to mold the, the future of the children. So it's a big opportunity, it's a kind of a, of a, of a joy, a sign of joy to teachers, even to know that they are uh, they are noticed. All their efforts is not in vain. All right. So back to you, Yumiko. Um, I mean, I'm sure you have done a comparative analysis um, on the education the situation of education in, in Africa, especially with the plight of teachers. So, what are the peculiarities between teachers in, in Africa and other parts of the world? Yeah. Thank you for that. Yes. Oh. I'm sorry. Hello? Thank you for that question. Uh, can you hear me? Yumiko, please go ahead. Yes. Um, okay. I was born and raised in, in Tokyo, Japan. So I'm Japanese. 
but I have spent the last 35 years in Africa. So I think I'm more African than Japanese. And I know many countries in Africa, including uh, uh, your beautiful country. I spent some time in uh, Abuja with the uni UNICEF. Anyway, Africa is diverse. So it is very difficult to say uh, teachers in Africa. But if I get some kind of average, uh, I'm afraid that teachers' socioeconomic status has eroded immensely. 35 years ago, I was a teacher in Kenya. At that time, uh, we were paid quite well. And the next year, in 1983, I was a teacher in Zimbabwe. Again, I could afford to have a very good life. Uh, but now, the teacher's um, status, socioeconomic status, has eroded because of uh, many reasons. And this is our concern. We would like the best performing young people to aspire to become teachers. But at the moment, that is not the case in many countries. Teaching profession is not respected. So we would like teachers to be respected, the teaching profession to be a sought after profession in all countries in Africa. All right, so um, Shemitayo. I'm, I'm coming back to you now. It, it, she has talked about how teachers are not respected and how um, respect and honor should be brought back to that profession. But as we speak, um, President Buhari has just approved a, a special salary for Nigerian teachers. He has also now increased the number of years of service from 35 to 40. Um, what consequence or what impact would, would this have on the teaching profession? Um, I think that we increase the, um, the morale of the teachers. As we said, that uh, when you know that you are, uh, your profession is recognized, it's going to stand as a motivational um, effort from the government for the teachers to come on board again, to put more effort on whatever thing that they are doing towards the students, that they should not relent they should try to put and put more effort for the students to come up, no matter at the level that they find there. So that that is the, uh, the that will be the impact of what our president is doing now. All right. So Yuriko, you. the the theme of the year is is teachers leading a crisis, reimagining the future. So how can Africa, in light of this pandemic, reimagine education? Very difficult question, but I think each country and each community, each school and each teacher has an answer. And I'm so happy to hear from you that uh, Nigeria has just done an excellent initiative to bring a teacher's motivation up. And uh, this is a difficult time. A lot of uh, schools were closed. Now they are reopening. Teachers are there to bring the safe and enabling environment for all the learners. And that's why we said reimagining the future. Teachers have a key for our future. And I hope that teachers in Africa will bring the bright future and uh, excellent opportunities for the young people. Right, and so it is possible. So let me stay with you, um, Yumiko. We know that, um, like we said earlier, the president has just approved a new salary scale for teachers. He has also now um, in increased the number of years of service from 35 to 40. What more do you think can be done for teachers? What is that one thing that will be done that will change the, the entire t uh, teaching la landscape? Good question. I think it is a, a social economic status and respect for teachers. When I was growing up in Japan, we always respected the teachers, and when we meet them, we bow them. And then uh, we are very happy when we were pressed by teachers. I think we can bring this culture, which is already there in many African countries. Teachers are respected and looked up to, and this kind of um, advocacy is needed to couple with uh, uh, increased uh, economic uh, incentives. Over. All right, so Tamitayo, um we understand that there is no um, respect, as it were, for teachers in, in the, just around the world and in Nigeria. But even within Nigeria, um, they will have respect on different levels. So if you're in the private, private sector, there is more respect for you than in the public sector. 
so how do we bring all of that you know, to be at par, um, whether you're in the private sector, whether, you, whether it's the low income or the high income or the public sector, that the standard of living will be at par? So, um, thank you. Uh, um, I think um, both the private and the, uh, and the public sector, they will be working together to make sure that the, 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 the teachers from a public sector are not, uh, are not maybe paid uh, more than the teachers in a private sector. Do you understand me? Absolutely. So the, 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 the two will work together. The management, we see together, we see that the two are working hand in hand to make everything go smooth. Our lecturer at Bell's University of Technology, Unifade Temitayo, and um, joining us from, from Addis Ababa, Director of Institute for Capacity Building in Africa for UNESCO, Yumiko Yokozeki. Happy Teacher's Day to both of you. Happy Teacher's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.